for a beginning for the Horn Hangouts. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. It's fantastic to see you. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of you already here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see people talk, talking in the chat already. Welcome back. It's Friday night, 9 p.m. Berlin time. You almost would think that it, we're back in 2020, somebody said, where we did every Friday night at 9 p.m. But here we are, back again, 2021. I hope everyone's health, healthy. I hope they're all being clever and wearing their masks and washing their hands. Same things as we said a year ago. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Anyway, wasn't that music incredible? It was arranged by my dear friend and mentor, Richard Bissell, who is here somewhere. Richard, where are you? Hello. Hello, Sarah. I'm here. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Welcome. And I must say, you're very well dressed this evening. Well, yeah, I like, I like, to, uh, like to please you and your family. <laughs> Well, you certainly did. Actually, you, you got your horn hangout um, uh, t-shirt as, as a thank you for being on the London Brass Christmas horn hangout. Where's your Christmas hat? Uh, well, with this hairstyle, I, mean, I don't think I need one really. Oh. But yes, the, the t-shirt uh, arrived um, because of the Christmas post about a month later, but um, oh. so, I'm proudly wearing it for the first time this evening. So. Well, I'm honoured. I'm honoured. And welcome to you. And you've got so, so many fans out there saying hello from all over the world. Annie Bosler and Dylan Hart are in LA watching. Sam is watching from Cardiff. Brendan Byrne is watching from Rugby with Coffee. My mum's watching. Selena in Lunenburg, Jewel Dirks, uh, Joanna, write in everybody and let us know where you're watching from. And also, what questions you have for Richard. I forgot my iPad in the Philharmonie today, so I'm trying to, to be multitasking mm. with uh, different computers. It's, it's not so easy. But no, um, <laughs> for those of you watching on Facebook, welcome to you as well. If you have any juicy questions for Richard, pop on over to the website, um, sarahwillis.com forward slash live because I will see those questions. I, I'm not multitasking uh, talented enough to be able to watch three chats at the same time. So if you're watching on Facebook and you have some questions for us, come over to the website and ask them. Otherwise, just write in and let us know where you are. You are more than welcome. Richard, how are you doing in these strange times? Uh, I'm pretty well, actually. Thank you, Sarah. Um, just getting on with life as well as I can, like everybody else, until we get back to normal. And um, yeah, just just waiting and just yeah, I mean life's good to be honest. Um, it's it's not. Uh, I found lockdown um, has has had phases of um, yeah, boredom um, and productivity. Um, I haven't found it too bad at all, Pit. To be honest, um, it's it's been like a a glimpse into retirement for me. I think. Um, <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> um, I'm still, I'm still, you know, raring to go and got, you know, enjoy what I'm doing in my, my career and playing the horn and everything I do. Um, well, when I, when I called you to say, would you be interested in doing your horn hangout, you were actually composing. I was, yeah, and uh, I, I've just finished it, actually. I was writing um, um, my horn sonata um, for um, a former uh, student of mine called Alex Wide, who has... Um, coincidentally, just been given the uh, the first horn job in the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra. Really, congratulations, yeah. Alex! If you're yeah, watching, good, good that's him, amazing, yeah. fantastic. And he asked me um, a while ago, would I write him a piece? And I said, um, yes, I'd love to. I, I can't say when you know I'll have time to do it, but I will eventually get around to doing it. And I didn't realise at the time that I'd have this uh, huge amount of time during lockdown to get stuff done. So um, I've, I've written it for him and um, sent it off. And um, that's I wonder, I wonder if it will have the same reaction that I had when you sent me the first version of Song of a New World. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, it's, it's probably not quite as, the piece I've written for him is perhaps not quite as extreme as, as yours was. We'll, we'll, get but, on to that. we'll get on to that later. We ha we're having a little Song of a New World session later. So any of you who've played it, get out your music. And any of you who haven't played it, please go to Richard's website and order the music um, because we're also going to be having a little competition as well. So um, a horn hangout. You can enter if you want, Richard. <laughs> uh, well, I bow to a, a greater power when it comes to um, low horn solo, but um, <laughs> I, I might, I might. Yeah. Uh, but you can play all those. It. I might risk it. <laughs> you can play all those notes. I know you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, I can. But 
not always, let's put it that way. <laughs> um, Richard, tell us a little bit about yourself because, um, I mean, in, in a nutshell, you started off in the Leicestershire uh, Youth Orchestra and the School Orchestra, the Youth Orchestra, but a very important part of your career and also influencing what you do today in your arranging and composing was being part of the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. Now, how did a French horn get into a jazz orchestra? Um, I suspect it was um, a token instrument in, in, in Nigel, as it's known. Um, I mean, horns have played in big bands before, you know. Um, uh, um, God, Nat Stan Kenton and um, others had, had horn sections in their bands. And um, there's, there's plenty of examples like Billy May's Big Fat Brass with, with great horn sections in it. And um, so I suspect that um, Nigel was just, uh, had a, somebody who, who was doing the arranging said, let's put a horn in it. And, and were you the um, only one? There's one horn in it, yeah. And you sit on the end <laughs> of the trombone. You didn't have a yeah, chance, mate. You didn't have And feel a little bit um, inadequate. But um, uh, before that, I'd actually been um, in Leicestershire where I lived. Um, the guy ran um, a big band linked to uh, BBC Radio Leicester. And uh, he invited me to go along and play on Sunday mornings. So I used to play with him. And they'd let me solo and, and they even encouraged me to write pieces as well. Um, so I was, my, my parents used to listen to bits of jazz on, 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 C, on LPs, as it was. And uh, so that's how I really got into it. it just, I just loved it. And just so well, that's what I've always done. I mean, it's actually, before I started the French horn, I, started, I was on the tenor horn in, in the brass band, which is quite common for you know, British players. So quite a few guys I know started on the tenor horn. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got into, into the, listening to jazz, playing jazz, um, and that is obviously clearly has affected the, the, the sort of music I write. I mean, we're all sponges, aren't we? We soak up, we soak up what we like and, and reject what we don't. And I must have clearly liked, liked the jazz style. Um, Did anyone guess. actually hear you play in the, in the National Jazz Youth Orchestra? Um, because, you know, you were pointing backwards, you were the only French horn. Um, that's yeah. <laughs> well, it was a bit of, um, you know, as I say, it's a, it's an element of tokenism in it. But what it did give me was, um, a, um, it, learnt, it taught me how to, to play in the jazz style, let's put it that way. Jazz articulation, um, which is very, very different from classical, isn't it? Classical is very um, straightforward and, and, and precise and neat and tidy and beautiful. And jazz is a little bit more... Um, slapdash, shall we say, um, a bit more fun as well. I'm also found playing jazz incredibly liberating um, compared to what you have to do in an orchestra, which is you know, be, be immaculate, essentially. Um, well, you, you decided to start being immaculate because you joined the LSO age 22, the London Symphony Orchestra. Um, that's quite young, actually. For Were you principal horn when you joined? Uh, I wasn't, no. Um, I, I was the, I was I joined as, as low horn actually um, playing fourth and playing second. Yeah. That's so, it. Uh, come That's on. where it yeah. came from. And um, my teacher at the time, um, Jim Brown, was in the section, and um, the guy who'd been playing fourth horn was getting getting on a bit, and I think he was having to take uh, work off tours, especially because his, his wife was um, was ill. And so they just got me in and said, "Will you will you cover for for the fourth chair?" And then and when it came to he left and the job was up. They just said, do you want the job? There was no audition um, or anything like that. Um, I mean, I mean, we've talked about this before, but it's crazy how times have changed um, in that respect. Um, you don't have to, there's no formal process, or at least I didn't know there was. I, I, I think I've spent a lot of my life being sort of blissfully naive about what's going on in the background. <laughs> and, um, but no, they, they, they gave me, said, do you want the job? And I got the job. Um, and then pretty shortly after that, we all sort of moved up a bit because there was a bit of a reshuffle in the section. And I ended up playing mostly third horn after that. Um, and then the first job, horn job came up and I was considered too young, which of course I was. Um, and so then there's a bit of a change around and uh, another job in the London Philharmonic came up, which I applied for. That um, was principal horn, though. That was principal horn, yeah. Was it? So you went actually down. You started as a low horn player. I did, yeah. I went downhill after that. And then yeah. you decided to go yeah. over to the first horn. Yeah, I did, yeah. But you I mean, I, I think I just wanted a job, really, to start <laughs> with, and um, any, job, any job would do. And I suppose <laughs> yeah. in, in, in deep inside, I wanted to, to, to show off and play first horn. Um, and unless you, unless you, pardon? <laughs> no. Sorry, 
Uh, no, don't we all? I mean, I, I would love to show off and play for us horn, but I'm just better, better at low horn. Um, well, my, my nerves won't take it. Well, it's, it's, it's a wise person who knows where he or she is, really. You know? and there's no point putting yourself through anything unnecessary stress-wise if, you, if you're not going to be able to handle it or enjoy it, then don't do it. What's the point? It's quite um, stressful being a principal horn. It is. Um, I didn't realise at the time, of course, being young, naive and uh, when I first started playing in, in proper professional orchestras you know, as first horn I just thought it was a continuation of, of being in the youth orchestra really I thought oh, this is great playing all these great tunes wow isn't this brilliant the, uh, behavior, was, the behavior is worse <laughs> behavior was a lot worse then yeah or you could say better it's all gone a bit serious now, hasn't it? Very serious. It's far yeah. more serious than it used to be. Although there's some great stories of the old days. Uh, we all, <laughs> everyone's so, so sporty and so healthy and so... I know. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you hear... Well, we won't go into that, but... Then we the way, should. <laughs> well, the, the way we used to behave and, and uh, is... is you'd be totally frowned upon now. I mean, yeah, and or you get the sack or whatever. But uh, that was just the way orchestras were in those days. We're talking about... Well, I joined the LSO in the early 80s. And um, it's still pretty well full steam ahead at that point um, in that style. I mean, but what you do get, of course, were incredible concerts. Um, I don't know, it just it was a bit, it's a bit hit and miss. Some of them were pretty bad, and others were incredible, really, really incredible. Probably better than they would be now, in a way, just because people were living on the edge a bit. It was just the all or nothing, gung ho style playing. You know? So it was, it was, as a young man, for me, it was incredibly exciting. Yeah, to be yeah. in that situation. Mm. Well, you obviously could take the pressure of being a first horn because you were first horn of the LPO, the London Philharmonic Orchestra, for twenty-five years. That is very impressive, Mr. Bissell, sir, if I may say so. Um, I accept the compliment. Thank you very much. Um, well, looking back now, it, it seems it seems pretty impressive to me. I mean, at the time, you just get on with it, get on with your life, get on with the schedule, and given the schedule, okay, this is what I've got to do. Uh, turn up and play it. And as I say, in the early days, it was very easy. Um, a lot of the, the pieces I was playing, I was essentially sight reading them, um, never played them before, and just got on with it, not realising actually that they are quite difficult, some of them. Um, but at the, at the time, I sort of thought, oh, this is a nice tune, I might just play this <laughs> sort of attitude. And um, it, it felt really pretty easy, to be honest. Um, it's only in, in later life as you get older and you've had a few knocks and a few experiences and things have gone wrong and you get some baggage in your head about all the stuff that you, you start to notice it is actually quite, it can be quite stressful. I mean, not, it isn't, I don't want to put people off it, of course, because it's a wonderful thing. Um, I think life just takes its toll eventually with everybody. But, um, you know, I, I stayed there 25 years. I had, I had a really great time and the orchestra was incredibly friendly which helps and all the, all my colleagues, all my horn section, all my friends, we were all a great team. I that's think that helps the horn player, doesn't it? Yeah. Too? That's that so collective um, sort of in it together. Absolutely, it's so important. Horn playing is hard enough as it is. And, and, and the last thing we need is stress in the horn section. I mean, the best horn sections, the, I think the horn sections who play the best are also the ones that get on the best. At least that's what it, I'm lucky enough to, to be in a, in a great horn section where everyone gets on well. And uh, it's just so important. I think it is. I, I've heard tales, as we all have, of, of sections who don't talk to each other. Oh. Um, and I can't imagine what it would be like. I mean, it, it's hard enough playing the horn without knowing that with people down the line waiting for you to mess up, <laughs> you know, and and that that feeling of being together as a bunch of friends, and when the concerts go well, and you you, you come off at the end, and everyone is really, really, really happy, and it's been a great show, and you go out on the few drinks. It's it's a great, it's a family, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want it to be anywhere else. I, I have been lucky that my 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 team, my sections, have, have all been incredibly supportive to me, and um, and. You know, hopefully I've set, set, been to the same to them and, and, and set out to be um, that way with them. That you wouldn't want the best, you, you want nothing but the best for your, for your players, don't you? You don't want to try and uh, you know, stitch them up and, and make them fail. What's the point of that? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. you, you left the LPO now for, you're at Covent Garden. You're sitting yeah. in the dark for the... <laughs> yeah, sitting in the dark, yeah, um, getting my, um, my pit tan. You know, sort of getting paler and paler as I get tan, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I joined that. So I just got to the stage when um, I thought it's now or never. Really, I think 
the, the, all the orchestras, they tour a lot. They do a lot of, the schedules were hard. It was, it was pretty relentless. And lots of live recordings and you know, all that sort of thing. And I, and I thought the job came up at, at Covent Garden, you know, one of the principal hall jobs. And I was just uh, just about to turn 50. And I thought, well, it, it's now or never. Um, so I applied for it. And I did have to do a trial then, actually. That was probably what I They made you do a trial after 20 I had to do a trial, yeah. I wow. just briefly recapping, when I got the LPO job, I did three concerts on trial. And um, the section... And said, okay, you're the guy we want. No question. There was no big panel meeting and the whole orchestra would be signing and I have to play to everybody in the conductor. The whole section said, he's the guy. So that, that was as close as I, as I got to the, um, until I got to the opera house um, to a trial. So I did my trial and I got the job. And then I stayed as principal horn there for eight years. Um, and then, you know, by that time I was sort of pushing 60-ish. <laughs> And I thought, you know, unfortunately, one of my colleagues died. Um, and, you know, we were going through the process of auditioning and we hadn't actually started auditioning. That's right. You know, applications and all sorts of things. And I thought, well, yeah, that'd be a smart move if I could, if I could move across back to my rightful place, Sarah, where I started, <laughs> um, as a low horn, um, so, uh, which I did. And I've, I've done that for about, I think, probably into my third season now doing that. Great. Gosh, it, it's so great to see you. The last time I saw you was literally the week the pandemic started, wasn't it? Do you remember? I almost didn't make it over. Um, it, is, it was a very special event, which we're going to be talking about a bit later on. But if I may just say hello to some more people that are watching, mm -hmm. some of your great fans. <laughs> We've got we've got people on if you're watching on Facebook I love it that you're all watching and saying where you're where you're watching from we love that we've got um, Adam Wolf from LA and Brent Shires from Arkansas and uh, and Azerbaijani and horn player Andre and Trahina Sherlund from Sweden that's fantastic and everyone's watching on Facebook if you've got any questions for Richard hop over to a website where we have a live chat going on and you can write your questions there um, on the on the website we have Henry from Cape Town has just has joined us. Um, Mathieu Leger has got a question. He wants to know what are your what is what are your sources of inspiration? So you can think about that, Richard. While I just say hello to some new people um, on the chat. Uh, Brianna is watching. A great fan from yours from Boston. Um, Annika from Cape Town. Tom Redmond is watching from Manchester. How lovely! Hello, mm -hmm. Tom. Um, so how about that, Richard? Who were your Who were your inspirations as a player, as a as a composer? as an arranger uh, as a player as a home player i mean i suppose i'd have to say um, barry tuckrock really um he was at his peak when i was a, a young man a, a teenager you know, listening to, getting into listening to recordings and i got his strauss recordings and uh, uh, various others and uh, he just played the horn like i thought the horn should be played really uh, just complete freedom and fearlessness and, and style and, and pizzazz and and, and control and, and everything about it was just the complete package, I, I think. Um, and so as, as a guy, I think I find he was probably the most uh, inspiring for me. Um, Composer-wise, um, I've always loved um, the, the, the late romantics, early 20th century, highly chromatic um, composers. I mean, I mean, as a moment, not, I mean, Ratmanin, of course, is, is, a, is a great composer. But there's sort of the, 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 the people like, um, uh, I don't know, you know Zen Minsky and um, Franz Schrecker and um, Gosh. Uh, Franz, Franz Schmidt. And, uh, That's Franz like all Schmidt. this huge stuff. Our, Massive stuff, is a yeah. great fan of, Fra of Franz Schmidt. He's making yeah. us play all these, uh, uh, huge, oh, yeah. Franz Schrecker and all these people, yeah. my goodness. And, and, and Korngold, um, which I would probably have to say, if, if somebody said, who, who, who would you take to a desert island? I'd probably have to say um, Korngold, to be honest. Gosh. It's the composers who make me cry that um, I like the best. Um, so, do, you try, do you try and make um, people cry with your arrangements? Well, whether they, they may cry with, with, you make with me pain. cry with your pain. With pain and fear. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. It, it's, it, if, it, if, it, if they do, then that's wonderful. Um, I know the stuff that makes me, gives me tingles when I listen to it. And um, whether, I don't know whether that gets transposed into my compositions I, I have no idea um so yeah that's the sort of thing and, and rhythm, rhythmic composers jazz composers um anything that's got some pulse to it or or some 
heart. Yeah. Um, I, I like that sort of thing. We play your jealousy a lot in the Berlin Phil Brass Ensemble. Oh, dear, yes, I yeah. like it because it's got a horn solo, so thank you for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Speaking of brass ensembles, you have been playing with London Brass ever since, it, no, you took over from... No, it wasn't at the beginning, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. No, you took um, no, it was, uh, 1990, um, I took over because Frank Lloyd was, was, in, was in the Philip Jones and he transferred over to when it became London Brass. And then he left um, shortly afterwards, I think. Perhaps he played, he made a handful of CDs with them and then left. And um, I, I took over in 1990, so I've been there 30 years now. Um, Gosh, and they're really like your family, aren't they? Uh, they are. And, um, and as I said earlier about the, the jazz, it was, um, oh, there they are. There they are. I, have I suddenly seen, thought they joined us. They me. wanted to say hello. Now just hang on and have a listen to this. Hey, hey. You're right. Oh, I'm hey, not hey. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. You're in a that's that. <laughs> you're in a that's that. You're, you're in a Zoom meeting and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> have a great time, okay? With a oh, hangout. Are, anyway. and, um, I don't, you know, we're very disappointed in, in the others that they're not here, but you've got the four of us. So, yeah, have a great time. All your, all your best mates. All, all the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Oops. Oh. All right. All right. Hey. Cheers, Cheers, Dickie. Cheers, Dickie. Cheers, Dickie. Bye. 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 Oh, that's lovely. Thanks for that. that a sloth thing. that came in at the end. I don't know what, on Lindsay's phone, suddenly you saw a picture of a sloth. For all of you that didn't know these crazy, wonderful people, there was Andy Crawley, um, Byron Fulcher, um, Gareth, um, Gareth, Small. <sighs> Gareth Small, and, um, and Lindsay Schilling, all from the uh, London Brass. And they were absolutely brilliant yesterday. They, um, we, we were trying to get everyone together, but you know what they're like, Richard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, everybody's busy or can't be bothered or cynical or one of those things. But, and you know, the emergencies, uh, my dog needs to be fed, um, stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. Um, yeah. so those four actually showed up at the time that we agreed. And I just thought it was lovely and they wanted to say hello to you on the Hangout. So, oh, that was lovely. Thanks for there that. There you go. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they are, they are like family again. We spend a lot of time together. And as you know, going away on tour with, with your friends is such fun. You know, the music is amazing. The concerts are great. But it's the social thing you which you really love, and we've known each other so long. I mean, Andy and Lindsay and I have essentially we've been uh, known each other since we were eighteen. Really, um, we were students together, and so, so you we know a lot, a lot of shared history, Gosh. a lot of shared, shared pain, a lot of sort of shared fun and everything about it. So, and when we go on on the brass trips, it's just just fun. Yeah, it, I remember a lot, I had a lot of fun with you lot when you all turned up in Berlin. I could hardly find my way home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the reward you see for doing for doing a hard show. You can you can um, re reward yourself later. That was a very nice party backstage at the Philharmonie in the days where we used to have concerts and hang out in the bar afterwards. Sure, that was, yeah. uh, anyway, yeah. they will come back. Um, Richard, tell me, I have a question because we play a lot of your or a lot of the Philip Jones stuff and a lot of the London Brass stuff, a lot of your arrangements in the Berlin Phil Brass Ensemble because we are we are twelve, but we are still only one horn. So mm. the, the trumpet gets a doubler, a trombone gets a doubler, or a piece off. I get no doubler. What's the secret to being the only horn in a brass ensemble and being heard? <laughs> yeah, being heard is well. It's just being able to play being able to project um, in a way it's um, it's a different way of playing it's just having strength and stamina and 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 being sort of not being too sort of soft about it just think okay I've got to I've got to make this this work here um, and of course you are as you say you're hiding to nothing um, facing backwards um, but uh, that's just a legacy of a, of a bad setup, really. You know, Tempe's wasn't a great setup, I suppose. Whose idea was that? Uh, that was Philip Jones's, I think. He, he combined his two ensembles he had at the time. He came up with ten players, one, one tuba and one, one horn, and the rest were, were fine. Is that really um, but, how it started? Uh, pardon? Is that really how it started? I think it was, yeah. He had a quintet and he had a, 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 a couple of trombones and a couple of trumpets used to put out in, as a different group. And um, he thought, well, why don't we combine them and, and uh, end up with 10 players. So. But well, um, I mean, it, it just gives you very strong chops. That's all I can say. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a good discipline in a way. It's a bit of a difference between playing in a brass quintet and a wind quintet. You know, with a, even with a brass quintet, you've still got to have strong projectile, is that a word? Projectile chops. Project, projectile for projecting other chops. 
uh, to be able to get through a Brussels song. Whereas we, in the people, we, so, we had there. someone in the youth orchestra who had, did a projectile vomit. That's how I know that. And when he, he had a very bad night and was in the second row of the horns and managed to hit the horn section yes. in front. Anyway, sorry about that. That's the only well, haven't, time. haven't we all done that at some point? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but in a, in a wind quintet, um, of course, you have to close it all down and play with incredibly, you know, incredible control and dynamics and, and all that sort of thing. So it's just, you just have to develop really strong chops. But I mean, I think I was pretty well um, accustomed to that because when I was in, say, in the LSO and in, in the LPO, uh, my, the first horns like Dave Cripps and, and Nick Bush, the other first horns, um, were so strong. So strong, and they hardly ever use bumpers. And Nick, I'd sit next to Nick, I'd show concert to him, but sit next to him or down the line in the bigger pieces, or he'd sit down the line from me. And I'd hear him just like super, superman horn player, really. And I just thought, well, okay, that's what that's how you play as a first horn, you just develop really, really strong chops because it, but it's about doing it though, isn't it? If you don't do it all the time, you lose it very quickly. Um, so you have to be match picking. We've all found this last year. I mean, it's we've been playing concerts, but we've been playing one concert in, instead of three. And the, the difference in the condition you have is just astounding, astoundingly awful. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, you, you can play at home, you know, do a little tootling around and think, oh, chops feel pretty good today, you know. And, and then you go into a, a rehearsal you know, or a session or something like that, and you start playing within five minutes, you're thinking, where have my chops gone? I haven't got any. But you thought that you thought you had some. So it's the difference that practicing at home is very different from um, playing in anger, isn't it? In, in, a, in a concert or a rehearsal, it's very different. And you just got to um, um, condition them again, recondition them to, to, to take. I mean, they always come back. I mean, I've, I've always, I'm never worried about taking time off. And I've always advised my students to, you know, don't be scared of, of taking a week's off holiday, you know, and really enjoy it, really enjoy the holiday. Keep, enjoy the mental freedom and the physical freedom of not playing the horn because it will come back. Mm. It will if you put the work in there's unfortunately you remember in the Philip Farkas book he says he recommends three hours of well-spaced practice and he said unfortunately you can't practice the third hour first because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what gives you then the stamina or you know whatever. It is yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's an interesting thing when you haven't played for a long long time you know, the first time you then get it out it feels dreadful really terrible and then bit by bit you know day by day it comes back and, and it's a really nice feeling a reassuring feeling to think, yeah they're, they're, they're still there i haven't lost them permanently you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah um richard there's some questions coming in about your writing for horn ensembles because this is what i mean i i would love to be able to arrange like you um i i, I really don't know how i've never really tried that hard but it seems terribly complicated is it what sam holbert writes what are your top tips for writing for horn ensembles do you have a, a rule of thumb do you have a method how do you choose the pieces that you want to you want to arrange for or compose? Mm. Um, sometimes and that's not my decision. People will say, will you arrange this piece for me? I mean, most of those London horn sound arrangements and, and the Give It One arrangements were all suggested to me. Actually, I did have a few um, of my own um, choices there, but essentially somebody said, will you arrange this for me? Um, may, may I just interrupt quickly, just for everyone who's watching who didn't quite catch that, the London horn sound is one of the most incredible uh, albums out there. If someone could put a link in the chat to it, that would be amazing. Um, and also, if you could put a link to Richard's website, because all of the music that we're talking about is on your website, right, Richard? All your arrangements is, yeah. uh, yes. and your compositions. So it would be yeah. great if someone could put that in the chat. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll do it afterwards. But the London mm -hmm. horn sound, they were practically all yours, weren't they? Uh, not all of them, but I mean, I think Most, yeah. I had a, a big, a big proportion of them were mine, and on on the the follow up CDs, um, give it one. That, there was a lot of mine on there as well. Um, when's the so, next one? When's the next one? Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure actually. Um, I have actually just well a few months ago, I did a, a 16 horn and, and rhythm section arrangement of MacArthur Park. Do you know that's been MacArthur Park. I don't. Um, for this um, this new record label, which we can get onto later. We will get onto that later. Yeah. Um, so that I don't know whether that will become London Horn Sound Three. I don't know whether it will, but cool. it, 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 if that will come, sure. Okay. Yeah. Can 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 expats living abroad come over? Even if uh, yeah, if I still have. <laughs> 
passport by then. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a bit, yeah. Well, it's, what is Brexit? I'm not sure whether... No, I'll have to go to quarantine no. and, um, and, uh, and be... Yeah, anyway, let's not get into that. Yeah. Um, right, so your top tips, please. Uh, well, the top tips are... Well, if, you, if you're talking about just making an arrangement, constructing an arrangement you know, without considering horns at this point, essentially, you're, you're, you're being a composer. Um, because you're taking somebody else's melody um, and composing with it. So you've got to work out some structure, some you know, journey, some ar architecture, some somewhere to go with it, what you're going to do with it, the key changes, blah, 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 you know, till you, you know, make a, build a climax, fade away, build, finish with a big finish, or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so you, you, I've just, got, I just like, got books full of jottings and scribble you know of what i'm going to do um, with arrows and symbols and all this stuff go there do this blah 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 and um so that's you can sort of map out what you want to do composition wise but then when you have to consider the instruments of course and as far as horns are concerned um uh, i think you've just got to uh, what is really important for me now as a as an older man really is, is to make people enjoy playing my music and um when I was younger, I'd write these, these these arrangements, which I'd play, and I think, oh, that's fine, it's, it's fine. Um, and then people would say, oh, why have you written that? It's a bit difficult. And so I've, I now know that I want my key thing is that I want them to be played. So I'm, I wouldn't write anything ridiculously freakish. That only, <laughs> only, a, only a couple of people. I beg to differ. Uh, which way even my arrow pointing to that down up um, can play <laughs> um, because you want you want them to be played and, and yeah. enjoyed and, yeah. and not scare people away from playing them. Uh, so you just got to bear in mind. Uh, often, often you have to bear in mind the players with the London horn sound and give it one. I was writing for incredibly virtuosic players, and I knew that pretty well anything I wrote would be played. But if you're trying to write stuff for your school or your college or university. Uh, know the players you're writing for, and um, don't don't sort of punish them or be, be cruel to them. But again, don't back off and write something. Don't compromise what you want to write. But but bear in mind, you know, the, the obvious things about the, the range. Don't write them too high you know, all the time. Occasional bits up to the high register. Nothing's too sustained and punishing. Um, plenty of bars rest if you can. Um, don't just. Just shape it so you, it's not saturation of sound all the time. Have some down time when there's not a lot going on. Just just give it some ups and downs, some contours to it, and then you know, have, have, a, have a big finish or, or fade away to nothing. But just bear in mind the, the physical aspect of if somebody has to play it. And if, if they're going to be hanging on by their fingernails and, and blood's coming out because you haven't given them enough bars rest or whatever, or it's just too, too intense all the time, then people aren't going to enjoy it and they'll, they'll probably not play it again. So I think that's quite a good lesson to learn. Make, make it playable. That's really good advice. Make it playable. You've written things for all different uh, stages of horn playing. There's some great quartets, which are quite good for, for sort of maybe good students. Um, I heard a recording of them on YouTube. There's a, there's a, a nice recording of, of, of your quartets. Um, the yeah, they were sort of... Um, Aimed at beginners, really. Very, yeah, very, were, very easy. Quartet. Those ones, yeah, those ones too. But then yeah. there's the portraits. That's a um, the portraits for octets. I mean, that was an example of, of me writing probably stuff I wouldn't write now in a way. Um, that's hard. We try. It to is hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, you, you get all you need is a good bunch of enthusiastic students who want to conquer it, and <laughs> um, and, and and they're fearless, and you say, "Fine, take it away. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It's great." So, if anyone has played Richard's "Song of a New World." Um, we've just re-released -re it and people, so many more people are listening to it now, Richard, than they did when we originally released the, al released the album. And you said on your, on, your, on your website, it's become a bestseller because everyone wants to play low horn. I'm so proud of that. Well, I think you should be. I mean, you've been a, a brilliant ambassador for, for spreading the word of, of low horn, Sarah. And, and I think that it's, it's become popular due to your recording, in all honesty. I mean, as a composer, it's, it's tricky to get your, your work out there, you know, but you write a piece and then you might get one performance and, um, and maybe and no more. But if you, if you have a, you know, somebody like you records it, it's, um, it's brilliant and, um, and it has caught on. 
um, very well. Um, so I'm grateful for anybody who well, bought it and grateful yeah. for you for asking me to write it. <laughs> well, thank you for writing it for me. And um, if, if any of you have played it and had some experience with it, do write in and let us know um, what experiences you had. And um, we thought we'd hold a little competition because, um, well, when, when Richard first sent me this piece, it was actually, remember I said, Richard, come on, I can do a bit more than that. I was like, do you remember? I said, come on, you can, can you we sort of spice it up a little bit here and here? And then you said, all right, and you took it back and you had, then you sent it. And I was like, I can't play that. <laughs> and in particular, the cadenza, in particular, the, the cadenza. And um, um, well, Song of a New World, I loved it because, well, I still love it because it's got your jazzy, bluesy influence in there. And, um, and to, I would listen to a lot of Bessie Smith to try and I felt very stiff. I felt like I couldn't really do the jazz part um, justice. Um, but uh, but did, did you try playing it beforehand? I mean, did you know you were you were presenting me with this fiendishly difficult piece? Um, well, I, what I do when I do write horn pieces, I do before I let them out to people, I do play them myself. I pick up my horn and, and just check that it's playable. Um, I'm, this is totally out of context. It's not about playing the whole piece. You know, if I played it within the whole piece, I'd probably think. But technically, I want to make sure that it's playable and articulate, articulation is pretty pretty um, as it should be. Um, uh, so yeah, as a horn player, I, I hopefully I write sort of playable, you know, horny, horny style um, writing. But with that, with that, when I first sent it to you, but bearing in mind what I just said about not wanting to punish people, you know, or scare them off, I think I, did, I probably erred on caution when I sent you the first sort of ideas of it and you said, you know, come on a bit. So maybe I then overcooked it. I remember you particularly said I want you wanted a few more high notes in it, which I which is, I was happy to put in. But again, um, that's right. And we had a discussion about uh, the odd note as well. I seem to remember you said, "How? Why didn't you play that note instead?" And uh, oh yeah, that's a better idea. So, <laughs> no, I think that's a good thing. Is that, sorry to interrupt. The, no, the, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's nice to have a bit of collaboration you know, with people who know what they're talking about. Well, it was more like there were a couple of bits where I felt in my break, I could have got out of it a bit easier if we'd played it like that. You know, it's just sort of little things coming up out of the very low or, or going back mm. down. Um, mm. There was just a couple of notes, but, you know, basically I, I, I love it and I work like crazy. And, and um, having just had it re-released, it's made me sort of go back because I thought, okay, let's see if I can still play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's, been, it, it's been great. I'm not sure to play it in public is really quite, you need to be really fit to do that it's it's quite especially ending on all those high notes you know yeah you didn't you do need to be match fit to play or yeah. well anything really but um yeah. um and you know the sort of playing you do as, as an orchestral player is, is not quite the same as when you're at your physical peak if you like when you're just about to leave you know conservatoire or college you've done your final recital and you're super fit super strong super confident when you stand up and play these pieces I mean, there's a few, quite a few recordings of it on on YouTube of people playing it really well, and um, it sounds it sounds great. So, I uh, know. Well, yeah. speaking of which, we would actually, Rich and I would like to challenge you, all of you who are watching. Now, Brianna's just written in and said she played it on her masters last April. Last April, good for you, go girl. Um, but um, if any of you would like to play us now, I'm going to we're going to share you the we share with you now the cadenza because you can't have the whole piece. You have to buy it off Rich's website, <laughs> which of course you will all do. Um, and here is the cadenza and Rich. Richard, I just want to, let's just talk through it. And if any of you would like to play it for us, record it for us on YouTube, on an open li link, on an unlisted link, send it to me and um, at the website address, info at And we will, we will look at them all, I promise. And, uh, and the winners will win something amazing, like uh, maybe a t-shirt, maybe a horn hangout mask. Look at those. And we, we've even got a, a, a male version today, Richard. Look, this just arrived in the post. Look at those. Oh, very stylish. No, I know, yeah. I know. Mm. They even smell nice. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll put the link to where to get those. In fact, I think my friend's watching who's made them. She made the bunting as well. I, I think that's sweet. She's very clever. Um, Sancho, if you're watching, can you put the link to those? Um, but we might, we might uh, think up some good prizes. So... Look, here we go. Here is the cadenza. Let me make sure I'm sure. Ah, we got it. Okay, Richard, I'm not going to play it before anyone. No. 
Um, my horn is freezing cold and it's the middle of the night here, but um, it starts here, very free and out of tempo. Yeah? Yeah. And then it's got this ridiculous, it's just basically the tune. Like that, as a really, but very free and out of, out of, out of temp, tempo, out of, yeah, yeah out of yeah. tempo. Hmm. And then you've got these, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. these, uh, yeah, I think Jacob is trying to ping me. Anyway, and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was your idea, right? To start. It was, yeah. Rather, rather you than me. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then, but up, then this is really hard. I had to practice this really. Oh, no, it's higher up, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I, I'm not going to play it for you now, unwarmed up. You can play it if you want, Richard. Well, I mean, it could be a bit embarrassing. Um... <laughs> but um, anyway, so then there's that bit, but that that's more or less in time, right? Yeah, the, yeah, sort of, but as long as it's playable, it doesn't want to sound, you know, stagnant and just not, it's got to have some sort of lilt to it. It's got to be, and, and so but you're not supposed to hear that they're really difficult slurs, right? No, exactly, yeah, yeah. I find those really hard. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a long way up, aren't they? <laughs> yeah so they're long, they're a long way richard really means those pedal notes yeah and then this was one of my favorite bits etc 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 and it should really be like that i get it should, yeah and so in a way you, you, the slower you start it the more chance you have of, of getting some momentum great Good. and the next bit i'm not going to play oh yeah so but Ba, 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 and then then you land on that and then I apologize I really didn't have time to practice it properly and I've been teaching all afternoon so excuses excuses but it's re way too hard to play live on a horn hangout <laughs> it's, you've got to be you've got to be in the groove to play this stuff haven't you of course you and have you have for sure yeah really warmed up and you've got but it's to... good i mean those those patterns of for instance the, the slow start and that cello end of, it's just the their sequences i quite like sequences in in it's you know five seven one five seven one five seven one just going down in in semitones and things like that so Okay, so we get to the ba 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 ba, and now the moderato but free. So this is the main theme of the whole piece, yes. and it's big. And you play it a little different to me. When you played it, I felt like I was a little bit classical and boring, because. <laughs> I mean, that's it should be a lot louder but not at nine o'clock at night not at nine. yeah well let me just turn on my uh i'll just turn off my turn off original sound no okay so it's in a way it's just what i was talking about earlier very early on about how jazz is a lot more casual shall we say with their articulation so um <laughs> So it's just a little bit more spit, a bit more spitty somehow, and a little why, bit more. Why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> well, I mean, it's your interpretation, you know, and that's the whole thing about writing stuff for people. They often, or more often than not, they'll make it a better piece than the the writer ever imagined, you know. And I have no, I have no uh, quarrel at all with the way you play it, Sarah. It's, it's, it's fantastic. No, but now I want to play it like you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and what I do try to do is put the articulation in. So, like, long, long, short. And the, the shorts are really short. So. Short, short. <laughs> that's what, you know, but that's, you know, that, that's what, if, you, if you're in a big band, they'd sort of put a hat, like a circumflex, you know, hat on those notes. Yeah. Yeah. 
So really, but, uh, that, okay, that's okay. That's good to know. So if any of you, if you're planning on playing this, everybody, for our competition, um, we want to hear the cadenza, or well, I'm happy to hear all of it if you want to, but we were thinking of um, having you play the cadenza, recording it, um, however you want, YouTube, unlisted, listed, link, however you prefer, and send it to us, and there will be prizes, we promise. And I love, Richard, at the end of the cadenza, ba ba da ba da ba da da <laughs> That's really F sharp is such a rubbish note. It on is that it. Sander. I have to basically so that it's in tune. I have to like almost cover it completely. So that what, in, is it because it's it's sharp. You mean? Or yeah, you mean? it's so sharp, and there's no time before to do any sort of. Yeah, pull. well, what I've what I've realised is on the on a double horn like we have, you know that the F third slide. What what do you use it for, except for pedal G's and and so pedal F sharp. So what I would suggest is pull it quite a way out if you're yeah. going to play this piece. Yeah. And it sort of, it helps it um, be a little meatier. Is that meaty on Zoom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you, you lot. Um, are you there? Somebody just asked if there's a PDF. Um, I don't have a PDF of it, but I, I do have a PDF of it, but I'm not going to um, send it out. Maybe I'll post it on the website after this for a little bit, but otherwise um, you can quickly, very quickly screenshot the cadenza as I scroll through this. Otherwise, um, yeah, buy the whole thing. It's really worth it because it's a great low horn workout. So um, Richard, thank you for that little tutorial. Uh, that's no problem. There's something no. I'd like to get onto before we run out of time, and that is the Magnificent Seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, tell us what this. Well, let me let me just play you something. Um, you, it'll be it's real memories. Um, let me play you this. Um, everybody, this is Richard's newest project, um, which I'm very honoured to have been part of. And um, yeah, this is basically what it sounded like. Amazing, Richard. Tell us quickly what that was, because I have a little surprise for you. Oh wow! Uh, that was the the final uh, minute or so of a piece I wrote called "The Magnificent Seventh for um, eight horns and piano, bass, and drums. Um, it's uh, it's going to be on a new CD of my pieces, which I've been recording over the last year or so um, at the Guildhall School in London, using um, players there. Um, former players, past players, um, uh, professors, and um, well, they're all your students, basically. Yeah, quite a few of my students. Yeah, I mean, I had taught quite a few of them on on that on that um, session, and um, combined with other pieces. I mean, I'm playing my um, horn trio on it, and there's a piece for eight bassoons, there's a piece for flute and piano, uh, violin, piano. There's a big brass ensemble at the beginning, and that's being uh, released by this uh, record label called Three Worlds Records which is um, a, a new record label concerned with promoting horn-related projects, recordings. Um, and so that's a really good 
label to be involved with as far as I'm concerned because they're, they're just trying to spread the word the word combined with um it's like a, another group called the Guild of Horn Players which is a British um, outfit concerned with promoting horn music commissioning new new music educational work and all this sort of thing um, and the record label is really concerned about giving the artists um, a good deal as well, um, which is important to the composer and the player as well, that they're not going to sort of rip you off like the big labels will. And it's essentially, it's just looking after the, the, the players, the artists in, in, involved, which is a laudable thing in my book. It's, it's going to be an amazing, amazing album, and I was very proud to be part of it. And Richard, you have so many fans, um, and especially your students um, who played in that, the, your Magnificent Seven, and they almost, all seven of them, are here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mouser, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Oh, how, Hello, how, everybody. Oh. Thank you, thank you for sticking through all that to, to, to come. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a, this is a thrill for me. Oh, yeah. we're all, it's all, all your fans, Richard. All your sheep have come back to well, the. Well, they are. They are. I mean, apart from Roger, who. Um, I where is Roger? He's a bit dark. Roger's dark in the dark there. Uh, hang on. Richard, Richard, will you introduce everybody? I will. Um, we have Chris. Chris it's Bond. even worse. Hang on. Hang on. Um, Angela Barnes, Joe Hensel, and Elspeth Dutch, um, all of whom I have the, the pleasure of uh, teaching over over my many years at Guildhall. Um, I've in another couple of years I'll have been teaching there for forty years. And, um, forty years at the Guildhall. Forty years. Yeah, and these are my uh, my lovely beloved. Um, former students who I'm very, very um, fond of and very proud of as well for what they've achieved um, in the whole world out there. You know, all incredibly successful and, and wonderful players and musicians. Um, yeah, I had to, I had to have them on my recording. You know, that was the whole thing about it was I had to use Guildhall. I wanted to use Guildhall people, and I could handpick anybody I wanted to really, and um, so they're the ones I, I chose. It's so great you could all, all join me. For, for people watching who don't know exactly who these amazing people are, I'm sure you all do, but just in case, as Richard said, he announced it, said everybody's saying, but Chris, I'll say in the order I can see you. Hello, Chris. Hi. Chris Parks, Principal Horn, the Swedish Radio. Um, where are you, in Stockholm? Yeah, Stockholm, yeah. Because you were in, actually in London. I don't know quite how you managed that. You have to tell me all about the quarantine. Oh, it's very boring. But uh, yeah, I was in London for a few days um, quarantining at my mum's. She does a very good quarantine service, if anybody is interested. <laughs> uh, and then I did actually bump into Richard very happily in the, the lower ground floor of the Guildhall, which was really nice. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. It's great you're here. Um, next, Angela Barnes, second horn of the London Symphony Orchestra. Hello, gorgeous. Hi. Where are you? How are you doing? What are you doing? I am in South East London. Um, just came back from rehearsal. Very lucky to be doing bits of work at the moment up at St. Luke's. Uh, yeah. Eddie? Um, he's so antisocial. This is my uh, cross-eyed ginger tomcat. He might make an appearance. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath, though. Now, Angela actually, she won the horn hangout prize of all time for her horn hangout with the London Symphony Orchestra horn section. We won't tell you why, you have to go and watch it to find out, but she won. <laughs> we won't go into any more detail than that, we'll keep everyone in suspense. But My so. mum is so ashamed of me. Anyway, so I'll try not to make a similar faux pas today. Oh, please do, please do. Oh, no, no. Well, I mean, if you have any similar stories of Richard, you're welcome to share them. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Richard Montgomery in the middle there. Now we can see you. Richard is an amazing natural horn player. Well, he's an amazing horn player. He was sitting next to me in the recording. So um, I got to hear, um, I got him, and you kept me in time, Richard. But um, Roger. Richard plays, Roger. Uh, Roger, sorry, Richard and Roger, God. Um, yeah. Roger, <laughs> Roger and Richard. Roger, um, <laughs> Montgomery? I didn't, did I? No, I didn't. I said Roger Montgomery. It, it doesn't matter. 
I'm, I've, I've had, I've had, I've much worse, much worse. <laughs> yeah, it's hard work to be on a horn hanging for hours. Um, so, um, Tom Montgomery, um, <laughs> amazing natural horn player with the um, OAE uh, or orchestra of the Urge for Imbibement. No, what's the real? <laughs> It, it it could be it could be yeah I'm I'm sorry you had to sit next to me on that Sarah you probably you could probably hear my the 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 mental processes going as I was tr struggling for fingerings and a bit, was, very challenging music that was quite impressive you know that you even knew how to still use your vowels after all that <laughs> well you know I've got got somewhat atrophied fingers but. Uh, you know, I can just about still do it. You certainly could. And um, you have to go and watch um, Richard, Roger, Tom, no, Roger Montgomery's um, Mozart's Naughty Notes, if you haven't seen that on YouTube. It's fantastic. So um, you've got homework. London Symphony Orchestra, um, Horn Hangout, um, Roger Montgomery's no Naughty Notes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, great you could be here. Thanks a lot. And Joe Hensel. Joe, hello. <laughs> Now, Joe, Joe and I were actually flatmates when we were at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and now you're very important there. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> I have the pleasure of uh, being uh, deputy head of Wim Brass Percussion, but actually I'm still a horn player. I'm still a horn player. I play, I'm second on the Academy of St Martins, and that's where my heart is. I've just spent three really lovely days back with the orchestra recording, and it's been amazing. So, yeah. oh, I'm so glad you can play back. Things are getting better, right? They're getting they better. are, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And um, and down at the bottom, last but not in the slightest least, Elspeth Dutch, principal horn of the CBSO, the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. Elspeth, you've been there for ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty long time. Uh, I don't even remember how long. I joined in 2003. Gosh, and you went, you were like... Two. Even 2002. Yeah, I joined 2002. You were still at Guildhall when you got the job, right? You were I just at... left. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it's great you could all be here. Who's got a story about Richard? Okay, I've got a story about Richard, but I don't know if I can tell it without getting in the sack. <laughs> but I can't careful, actually. careful. Yeah. Richard, I, took, I just thought about this. Richard was the most amazingly enabling teacher. And quite often, do you remember, Sarah, that when we were at Guildhall, then there were like not many of us there and, and people kept getting jobs and leaving. And I think, you know, then you left and, and Johnny Barrett left, got a job, Carsten left, uh, you know, they, everyone, one after the other left. So there were very few horn players left. So we were doing loads and loads of playing and our chops were, you know, by the time I went into my lessons with Richard, my chops were gone. And I remember one lesson standing up and going, I've just got no chops left. So Richard said, let's go down to my car in the car park. I've got this brilliant tape. You're going to love it. And then he just proceeded to play me a tape of horn splits. And it was just, it's just what I needed at the end of a, of a mad day. And actually that's, that's, I mean, Richard has always been so down to earth. And, and so actually, you know what, nobody's going to die if you split a note. And I think that's, that was really helpful for me as a bit of a perfectionist. You so, still have that tape, Richard? <laughs> it's a cassette uh, tape, do you remember? Those are cassette tapes. I have to say that in, in my defence, I think it was given to me by Hugh Seenan. But, it uh, was? Yeah. <laughs> Were they all his splits? No, I think he'd, he'd compiled it or somebody else had done it and given it, given it to him. Let's not blame him for it at all. I never heard Huey split a note. No, I didn't know. But I think it's just important to, to let your students know that you're playing your horn and it's, these things are going to happen and, and to, just to try and relax as much as you can about it, really. You know. uh, uh, Rich, I'm at it again. Roger, <laughs> Roger sent me a picture of you relaxing. I've got a shirt like this. This is... um. This is, uh, yeah. Sorry, I can't get it up any close. This is the preparation for the ballet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that, it, ballet does that to you, doesn't it, really? <laughs> it's the only way to get through it, I think. The best I can, it's the best I could do. Sorry, I will, I will make sure I will print that out. But it was sent during the Hangout. Thank you very much, R Roger. Thank you for sending that during the Hangout until I could only manage to get it on this. So, yeah. So that was, mm. um, that was Richard sent by Roger. Mm. Yeah, got it. <laughs> okay, you can always rely on your friends, can't you? <laughs> Chris, come on. What was what was what was Roger like as a teacher? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I got it now. <laughs> uh, Richard and I. Richard was a very nice, very good teacher who helped me through some uh, <laughs> difficult moments sometimes. But uh, we became colleagues after that, which was really what was it five years maybe the, the, um, 
probably at least that, yeah. Yeah, in the LPO, which were incredible times for me with such a nice section. And uh, yeah, we we liked the same music and we felt the same about a lot of things. And it was, but we're sort of family now, so I can't share my best stories in public. Wow. <laughs> well, save them that's, for the after party. That, yeah. That's it. I mean, everyone who's been on a horn hangout knows that the best is actually the minute we switch off. And uh, I wish we could keep keep the cameras rolling. Um, yeah, without anybody knowing, so that all the horn hangout viewers can join in. But uh, sometimes you just gotta gotta switch off the live button, <laughs> but mm. not quite yet. <laughs> Sarah, I have one more picture. If I don't know if you're able to make me um, a co-host and able to share screen. Sure. But um, so sure. it will take me a while because I'm rubbish at Zoom. You should be able it's to always, do that. Uh, always okay. spells danger when, when Roger starts doing this sort of thing. I get a little bit nervous. Oh, here we go. There we go. We've got that. Yep. Oh, well. <laughs> after parties, straight after recording the Magnificent Seventh. <laughs> yeah. What Amazing. was actually happening? Were you cleaning up or what were you doing? Lady I remember we had a little drink afterwards. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, was, this was clearing up all the stuff and, and we carrying just, it away. We were just setting up where we were going to sleep that night under, under the bridge <laughs> outside the barbecue. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that session, um, as you sort of slightly referred to, was, was really got in by the skin of our teeth, wasn't it? Just the day before the whole world mm. shut down. I, and I was, I was really quite jumpy about it over that weekend, whether people were going to turn up, especially you and Sarah and Chris, who were coming in from Berlin. Um, we only just got back. I got back literally. The, the, I was the only person on the plane who went back that day. Um, yeah. Poor Joe, I cancelled your your master class for the guild hall because that was just that was just like two <laughs> seven horns were okay, but like thirty students. Um, I've got I've got a, a very nice picture of that too. Look look at this. Look. Yeah. Oh, somebody, somebody's head has been cut off there. There. Can you see? Everybody said, yeah. Yeah, isn't that nice? Where's Dave and Loz? He's there. Dave's in there. Oh, yeah, tonight. No, where is he tonight? Um, cooking, perhaps. I think, I think he has got the link. Anyway, he did know about it. And he said to send his best. He would. He's working, I think. So he said. Uh, um, Dave was actually Dave Pye was a soloist in your Sinfonia Concertante, which I heard on YouTube. He was, yeah. Amazing um, playing. Uh, yeah, and he. He, um, I wrote that for him and uh, Rod Franks and Andrew Marilyn. And uh, Dave only only said to me fairly recently, um, we were talking about stuff, and he said to me that he said he thought that was the hardest thing he'd ever had to play. And I was a bit shocked um, because you know I don't, as I said, from what I was saying earlier, I don't particularly like sort of roasting people, punishing them, and making them sweat too much. Um, for him, who, who's an incredible player with an amazing facility and technique for him to say that he thought it was difficult I thought oh my god what have I done <laughs> and so you know I've, if ever it, if ever it gets played again you know, who knows then I've, I think I might just sort of tweak it a bit you know so pe don't let people be put off by it you know oh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember this Richard sorry Chris um that concert where um Dave Rod and Andrew Mariner did your Symphony Constante happened to be my first ever concert with the LSO at the Barbican. So it was right in the early days of when I was doing my trial for Second Horn. Um, but because Dave was going out the front as a soloist, we all shifted up. I, for some reason, I've been bumped as bumper for that day. And I ended up on Third Horn, my least comfortable <laughs> place in the section. Um, but it, it's just interesting because I've been you know, ahead of this. I've been thinking about how, you know, the contact we've had over the years. And it really feels like you've been sort of threaded through my entire sort of career progression because I played Lone Call in Charge, I'll make it about me for two seconds, but um, for Young Musician and that was, I remember having to call you up to ask you a bit of background about that. And then I was lucky, lucky enough to be in the Three Portraits recording. That was Huey, it was my sort of generation of Guildhall who Huey decided, it was after, on, off the back of the London Horn Sound success, that he decided to get students to record that, didn't he? And yeah. then, and then what with the Sifone Constante, and then finally this Magnificent Seven. I feel like I've been blessed. And oh. if, I, if I remember rightly, didn't you play in the LPO when we did my piano concerto as well? Do you know what? I was about to say that as well, but yes, I, I feel like, yes, my yeah. very brief appearance as third horn there was, um, <laughs> for, again, for one of your uh, compositions. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 
Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for playing on it. Yeah, it's great. I didn't realise, and that was your very first concert, the Symphony Concertetti. Gosh. I'd, I'd done a prom concert. That was my first concert, but it was my first concert at, at the Barbican. Oh, wow. In the new season. Gosh. And Elspeth, you and Richard, have you, when you went straight up to Birmingham straight from college. Yeah. Um, but it was Richard that prepared you for all that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He was my main teacher all through college. And um, I think the main thing that Richard taught me was just to chill out. <laughs> and um, if I was kind of stressing about something in a lesson, he'd just be like, what's the big deal? Just just chill out and sometimes I would think like oh, it's easy for you to say <laughs> but I, that's definitely stuck with me and I think I generally am quite chilled out about stuff like somebody was mentioning about split notes earlier I kind of just accept that I'm going to do them every day and it's fine just carry on <laughs> um and the other thing that I always remember is Richard said to me um <laughs> Angela's gonna hang me for saying this but um he <laughs> I remember him saying don't always do the same warm-up because what if you're late and that's been a useful thing because I'm often, I'm not usually late, but I'm usually just on time, especially I've got two small kids. So since I've had them, it's like, there's a lot to juggle in the mornings. So I always find that very useful that I can just turn up. It's like, just start playing. It'll be fine. <laughs> Richard said so. So it's all right. And um, I'm not suggesting, you know, if people, some people are very into warm ups. I know that, but um, I think that's just a really useful thing just to chill out about stuff. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> self self confessed warm up queen here. So yeah, there were always two two sides of the. We story. have different views on that one. <laughs> well, I, I would say that it's it is that very thing that if if you do get slightly hung up by it, and you, what you want to be as a home player is as is relaxed and as calm as you can be all the time. And if you've got it in your head that you've got to do your rigid, you know, half hour warm up every day, if you get there and there's time to do it, that's brilliant. Um, but what happens if you if you don't? Uh, you, you're going to be troubled by it. You're going to feel anxious, and whatever. you you get through it. You'll be fine. You know, so, um, I'm, 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 say, I'm not saying don't do a warm up, but, but be be flexible with it. Or, yeah, I probably take it a bit too far. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you don't, there all seem to be players who just get it out of the case, Elspeth, and 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 play with um, effortlessly with no problem. So, you know, uh, you're one of those. I think. Well, I, I remember. I'm just, Elspeth, I'm just always uh, late. <laughs> I remember Elspeth um, doing her um, final, it wasn't a final recital, I don't think I could do that, but I think I heard her play her final recital to me um, and I was completely knocked out by it because up until that point, um, you know, one of the pleasures of being a teacher, of course, is that you um, you go you have the, you go on the process, the, 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 um, the, how you get, how the students progress, you know, from the beginning to the end and some of them seem to have it Naturally, some of them don't, some of them are slow, some of them are quick, and it takes all sorts. And the skill of it as a, as a teacher is to try and bring it out and tease it out and find the key to unlock what's, what's troubling them. And um, I can't remember when Elspeth, you know, she played me her final recital, and I was just, I was not actually, I was quite emotional about it because I thought this is incredible. You know, knowing, knowing how she um, started out, I mean, she's always been a good player, but you know, with students, you always have to work on stuff, don't you? And I thought, this is amazing, like, absolutely amazing. I, I sort of completely switched the, the switch on and it was there all working. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Richard, I'm afraid we have to stop the, the, the live horn hangout now. We're going to have a little bit of a, of a reunion hangout afterwards. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but for the live horn hangout tonight, it's been amazing to have you on. And I mean, I could talk to you for like, well, we need a whole day to get all your fantastic tips and your arranging and your composing and your uh, being the only horn in a brass ensemble tips and, uh, mm. and, and teaching. But you can see there are, you know, all these people on this screen just adore you very, very much and, uh, and admire and respect. And um, yeah, and everyone's oh, shown up from their corners of the world. To, and all our online audience, all the mm -hmm. Horn Hangout. I'm sorry I didn't get to all your questions, but Richard, maybe you could have a look at the live chat after yeah. or tomorrow sometime and answer some of the questions because we, yes, just, will, yeah. we didn't have time to get them. Yeah. So if you, if you have any questions for Richard, then do write them into the live chat on the website and, um, and we'll try and get the answers to you as, as best we can. But thank you so much for joining in. That's okay. But well, perhaps I just talk too much and um, yeah, <laughs> I should have kept quiet. No. But, I mean, I would say, in, in to, to sum up, that, that it is playing a horn is, is a great thing to do, and 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 the, being a horn player of the horn playing fraternity is is is, is a, a lovely, inclusive, 
career and um, we're, we're all in it together through thick or thin and i think the fact that we also stay tight we stay tight together don't we as a sort of a armor against uh, whatever what's thrown at us and uh, it's a lovely lovely brotherhood or sisterhood or whatever hood to be to belong to so um yeah yeah here here should we have a drink to that everybody mm. i think we should <laughs> Yeah, Roger's looking, looking hopeful. Yeah. Angela started. Oh, right. I've got to go. Oh, I see. Right. Richard, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, Roger, Chris, Angela, Joe, um, Elspeth, thank you so much for joining. Stay. <laughs> Stay here. To all of you watching online, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we'll be back on the 24th of April with the Seattle Symphony Horns, who will be live at their symposium. And it's called the Morning After Horn Hangout. And you will find out on the 24th of April why we are calling it the morning after horn hangout the mind boggles <laughs> richard you're a hero thank you very very much it's been my pleasure i've really enjoyed it thank you for asking me and lovely to see all my friends as well thank you see you soon bye-bye <laughs>